So what exactly is a STEMI alert packet? It's a clearly labeled red envelope that contains precise forms that detail the role of each provider during a STEMI alert. In essence, it's a best practices guide to acute STEMI treatment tailored to your institution. Within the packet are five key sheets, three checklists, and two data collection sheets. The three checklists include a physician checklist, a nurse checklist, and a STEMI scribe checklist. Each specified checklist details those vital tasks that each provider must concentrate on to effectively and quickly treat that particular STEMI patient. The checklists guide the process, making sure that it occurs with a minimum of delay and error. For example, this is a physician checklist from a hospital that utilizes air transport to transport its acute STEMI patients for emergent PCI at another facility. Note that one of the first tasks is to ask the ED staff to assess air transport options. They need to know right away if they can get that patient there on time. Other sites have slightly different priorities. Again, each upstart checklist is tailored to that particular institution but utilizes the same principles and procedures. Two key sheets are data sheet A and data sheet B. These two sheets are nearly identical and are used to record important intervals and information during the actual STEMI alert. This data is vital for process improvement and feedback. The data collected is minimal so as to not interfere with the actual treatment process, but the data itself is extremely important. Remember, you can't improve what you don't measure. This brings us to key action number three. Complete the two data sheets. Record the process and allow your institution to make improvements over time. This may help with the next STEMI alert. They also allow feedback to individual providers. Examination of multiple STEMI alerts over time may point out deficits in the treatment pathway that may need to be amended. Again, completing the two data sheets does require a bit more time, but the benefits to our patients are well worth the effort. Now let's move on to key action number four, which also deals with data. Ensure proper data management. What this means is that data collected during our STEMI alert needs to be sent on to the appropriate destination. For example, data sheet B must always accompany the patient, whether they are sent to the catheterization lab or admitted or are transferred to another facility. Once that patient's treatment is completed, data sheet B will have a clear record of their treatment from recognition to reperfusion. It's extremely important that data sheet B follows the patient and does not get lost. Data sheet A, in contrast, stays in the emergency department. After the STEMI alert is completed, data sheet A is collected along with the three checklists and placed in the red envelope to be sent to the emergency department's QI person. Note, the three checklists are placed in the red envelope as well. If you are the physician, nurse, or scribe involved in a STEMI alert, please complete the very basic information on your checklist, such as your name. It's also important that you write any specific comments about that particular STEMI alert in the comments section. This extra info is often very important in providing insights about what went wrong or right when the case is reviewed. I think that this STEMI alert process is uh, streamlined quite a bit by using the the stimulant packet, uh, namely it allows uh, the physician to concentrate on the patient and it helps them make decisions in a timely fashion knowing that the ancillary staff is able to fulfill their roles and go through their checklists and make sure that everybody's on track and on the same page. It's true, recognizing and treating STEMI in an often chaotic and busy ER environment can be a challenge. The reason Upstart is so successful in addressing this challenge is that it encourages a standardized yet customized approach to the STEMI patient, allowing for much of the critical action and decision making to take place in advance. Thus, when a STEMI patient rolls in the door, the treatment of that patient is reliant on a few yet critical actions that can be dictated 
and guided by the STEMI alert process. By decreasing the time to recognition and providing the tools for earlier reperfusion, Project Upstart can help ensure that your next STEMI patient gets the best care possible. And remember, time is muscle. If you can reduce your average recognition to reperfusion time by even 20 minutes per patient, at the end of a year, you'll have saved lives and you'll have saved heart muscle.